Our next speaker is Robson Jr. I see he's online, perfect. He uh, works at Microsoft. He is a developer there and he's involved with software community, of course, especially the Python community. And he talks about mm -hmm. the data pipeline with Python. Um, six years of learned lessons from mistakes. What is better than learning from mistakes? So please, Robson, start sharing your screen. Okay, it's time to start. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm talking from Berlin. Uh, my name is Robson. Thank you for the organization. Thank you for everybody to make it possible, especially online in these hard times. It's quite a challenge. I know how it's uh, hard to organize in a conference, especially online, keep everything on track, uh, on time. So congratulations for all the team. Seems to be a nice conference. It's my first time talking on uh, EuroPython, so I'm quite happy to be here. Um, actually, I'm working in the GitHub. GitHub uh, was bought by Microsoft in 2018. So basically, I'm still in, in Microsoft, but GitHub right now. Yes, feel free to drop, drop a message anytime, even in Discord, even in, 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 in Zoom. Let me introduce myself a bit. So I'm originally from Brazil. So I moved to Europe four years ago. I'm a developer for more than, than 16 years. Uh, I learned programming with Python. Python followed all my career. I'm quite happy even I transitioned for another technologies along the way. So Python always followed me. Uh, feel free to reach me out on Telegram. Uh, my Telegram is public. So if you have a question, if you want to talk, feel free to add me there. PSAO0. Or you can ping me on Twitter or, of course, in the GitHub. It's the same username, if so. So PSAO, feel free. Uh, all the feedback uh, is welcome, and I love to, to talk about everything, right? What do you talk about today? Uh, it's very important to equalize the expectations, even this is a fully Python conference. Of course, uh, you talk about Python, but for now, half of this presentation is about uh, data products. Uh, Python is a keystone on data products, it's because you are talking Python here. But first of all, you need to equalize. This is a beginner talk. Uh, this is a beginner talk, so uh, I introduce all my mistakes because, as mentioned, so I learned a lot with my mistakes. Uh, community helping me a lot, and now I think that's uh, fair enough to share the knowledge as well and come back to the, the uh, conferences, right? Um, it's not about code, it's not about how to optimize your code, but it's about how to understand the anatomy of a data product. Data product is not basically data pipelines, uh, but have intensive, uh, have intensive data products as well. And all these principles is applied for the same. Uh, we covered the concepts of lambdas and cat architecture. It's very important to understand. Uh, the main qualities of a data pipeline as uh, any other software in the world, uh, softwares should have some qualities and pipeline as a software as well as wallets. And of course, you talk about Python, Python as a keystone. So you need to, uh, you need to glue everything with Python and you talk about where Python matters, right? Uh, my goal in this presentation is to help you to start planning uh, the a great data product. So think as a, a data engineer, uh, how to help your team of software engineers to produce it, to collect, to store, to process, to serve uh, data in a large scale, right?
first thing uh, first thing is uh, understand the anatomy of the, the, the product. It's very important, right? Uh, when you talk about uh, a, a data pipeline or a data product, you need to understand uh, which kind of variables you are dealing with. Right, so nowadays in modern uh, modern softwares, you are collecting a bunch of data. Uh, you can imagine any kind of uh, product today are collecting using behaviors, telemetry, logs, databases, uh, interacting with APIs, and you need to collect all the kind of traces. It's it's uh, very important. The concept of the big data, uh, the old concept of big data that follow us by the book, by theories that you represented by five or four piece, depends on the author. Uh, and these are, are split in three. Um, one of these is volume. Volume means uh, the quantity, uh, the amount of data that you are collecting, that you are storing, right? The variety, so the type of data. So. JSON files, PERC files, uh, API calls, unstructured files, structured data, unstructured data. Imagine that you have images, you have tweeters, you have web pages, logs, database, and everything needed to be stored. In general, this kind of unstructured data is stored on one thing named data lakes. And data lakes, it's basically where you store everything. You put everything there. Of course, you have some techniques to store the data in the data lakes. But in general, you put everything there, you organize there. And from there, uh, that place, it's called source of truth. You are able to collect your data and extract what you call it of data sets. For example, you are collecting a bunch of uh, tweeters and you need to, to get just a, a piece of this, these tweeters by the date or by uh, username or something like that. So you extract this data set, right? Uh, in the middle, you have like the process. The process basically are the softwares as well. So when the, the magic happens, right? So you have veracity. So when you, so you can trust you can trust in your data. This is, the, this is the, the most important question to do, right? So you can rely on our data. So your data represents something for, for the final user for who needs to use this data, right? And how, how fast uh, your software uh, are, are able to process uh, all the data that you need. This is the velocity. How frequent? you need to, to, to process this data, to deliver this data, right? So imagine a bank that you need to process the, the payment, the fraud detection. So you have like machine learning models or you have some kind of analysis and you need to do it in a near, near real time process or you need it to be uh, this kind of decision in a short time. So uh, it's the V that you needed to attack, it's the velocity. In the last, in, in, in the another, uh, in the another uh, point, you have the veracity. It means uh, your data represents exactly that you collected. And after you process it, after you analyze it, your data represents exactly that you, you, you are expecting for. Uh, not the result itself or exactly what you're expecting a good or bad thing, but the calculation, the analysis is right. So you need to make sure. Uh, and it's based in the code as well, right? As you can imagine, uh, a data architecture is a software as a computer program, right? So you have a memory, you have files, you have inputs, you have functions and variables that deal with the, the software, right? They are processed, they happen inside the, the process. And in the end, you need it to deliver it. You need it to spread this, this, this information that you took uh, from, from, from your software. Sometimes you have the APIs, you have the files, you have the UIs, 
uh, or even you, you, you deliver in another way, but works exactly the same. The idea is the same, right? Um, another important aspect is to understand the, the different architectural styles. And you are talking the most acceptable uh, architectural styles in the market nowadays. They are not different, but they complement each other, right? So Lambda started first. So, uh, so you need to understand the Lambda, and then you need to understand the cup uh, of uh, after in order to determine what's more simple and you can evolve better uh, in, 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 in your challenge, right? There is no silver bullet, so you need to understand what you need. For example, even I work for a big company. Uh, actually, I'm not working more with data science two months ago, but before, I'm just working with batch process. A long time, I just work with batch process for, for solving my problems. You understand? So I don't need real-time uh, process, but probably you can need because you, you need to understand the, the architectural uh, uh, styles. The first one is the, what do you call as Lambda? Lambda is an architectural uh, style that tries to deal with a huge amount of data in an efficient way. And here you have two premises, right? You need to reduce the latency between the process and the serving the data because you have a high throughput. You need to have a low latency to, to process this data and you need to let the deliver this data. For that, for, for that, you need to keep in mind that any change in the data, uh, in the data state needed to generate a new event. So it's like, it's a hetero uh, event. So every time that you have an ingress, you are collecting the events. Some systems are sending events to you like logs, API calls, whatever, and you need to decide if you need to process it in a real time or in a batch layer. It's up to you to decide. But you need to understand what's happened when concepts called event sourcing. The event source is a concept that you're using events to make predictions and storing chains in a system in a real time basis. Or, or it means, so you have like a column in your data storage based on date or something that you can have a historical data, right? To, to ensure that all the chains in your data, it means our events that are happening in your data, you'll be stored in a sequence. For example, uh, you are trying to buy something with your credit card in uh, e-commerce. So you put your, you, you, you type your credit card to pay for some, something, and then some things goes wrong. And then you have like a transaction. This transaction has a, a, a rollback, and then you try it again. And this create a sequence of events that you needed to analyze it before. For example, this kind of uh, situation that I mentioned, so can result, for example, to block, to block a card by doing a fraud, fraud, for example, right? Because you need to understand what's happened and how it can happen in this speed or batch layer. Imagine that you are trying to put your credit card in e-commerce, right? So we identify our IP and your IP is not from Berlin or it's not from Dublin. Your IP is from any place in the world that is suspicious. So you needed to get all this information, cross this information in a very short time, low latency to determine if this card is, is facing a fraud or not. Right? This is uh, called event sourcing because you are generating events and events and you are able to analyze this timeline quick. But you have two splits here. You have the batch layer. The batch layer is the most common nowadays because it's the most cheap, it's the most defunded uh, uh, technique. Basically, everything that you consume from the ingress is stored in a data lake, right? And from this data lake, you have like 
periods of jobs or have jobs running uh, hour by hour, day by day, or in, in periods that get this data from the data lake and create it in a new data sets, right? They extract the data sets, they clean the data, they structure the data, they can generate the machine learning models, they can do all the jobs. And then in the end of the batch layer, you have one thing named the batch views. It means that is the representation of your data, right? So your data lake. So any manager from your company, any person who wants to, to consume this data can go there and query the, the data. In another hand, you have the speed layer. The speed layer consume the ingress as a string. Once the data comes to your system, they started to be processed. As I mentioned, it, it can be used for financial proposal to identify a fraud or not, right? And in the end, all this data, even you use speed layer or batch layer, in the end, you have all this data prepared and stored in a database that permits you to, to, uh, to consume or to serve this, this, this data, right? The main difference in the next slide we will talk about. So uh, you have some pros and cons on the uh, Lambda architecture. So for the Lambda, you need to keep your data permanently started, right? So based on that, you, you might have problems with uh, GDPR in the Europe. So because you, you needed to retain user data, you needed to, to be compliant with your previous laws, or even you spend a lot of money to store a huge amount of data uh, to be processed. So you needed to plan it, right? The second one, uh, all the queries are based on the immutable data. It means that nobody can change the data. If a data is changed or the state of the data is changed, a new event is created and then you can follow all the things happened before, right? Uh, um, Science, this is used for a long time, so it's reliable and safe, so it's fault tolerant. It's why it's fault tolerant, because you have all the data stored in a permanent basis. If you found any bug, anything that is wrong in your code base, you can correct it, and then you can run one thing they call it backfill. It means that you can go to your data lakes, read all that data, and reprocess all the steps of your pipeline. And, and it's become a uh, Lambda architecture scalable, vertical but is label because if you need to, to process a huge amount of data, you can put more machines in your cluster to, to process it, right? And you can manage your historical data in a uh, distributed file system. The most common or basically in fact distributed file system nowadays is Hadoop or uh, in the cloud based in, in Amazon, Microsoft or Google, for example. Uh, but uh, you have some cons that you need to, to take care. One is premature modeling. It means that you, when you are talking with your team, when you are preparing your, your data <clears throat> ingestion, uh, when you are modeling your data or how you want to receive your data, uh, you need to think a little bit more. So uh, you need to avoid some kind of premature modeling, try to evaluate your schemas uh, and try to evaluate your tools, how you validate your scheme uh, step by step in order to not broke your uh, your pipeline. As I told, so can be expensive because you are storing a huge amount of data and depends of the batch cycle that you decided to use. Maybe you can spend a lot of money to process a uh, huge complex pipeline, right? Now we will talk about the Kappa. Right, as I mentioned, it is not a replacement for a Lambda architecture, but it's alternative, or even you can consider like it's like a, 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 a update of a serving layer uh, of a Lambda architecture, right? And Kappa architecture is, is unique, use it for a streaming process. Uh, things that you needed to do uh, 
clo a nearby real time process, especially for analytics, uh, segmentation, or or uh, fraud detection or something uh, that you needed to have a, like a fast response. Another nice thing about the Kafka architecture that you, you can keep just a small code base for that. Different from uh, Lambda architecture that you, you have different components that you can use, different pipelines inside one pipeline, soup pipelines. In general, cap architectures you can you can share the same code base because uh, the data ingress tends to be uh, restricted for few data sources, right? So basically, if you are not, uh, it's the most important. Uh, if you are not uh, up to uh, real time answers, keep your life in the batch process and apply all the things that you know about software engineer to keep your code healthily and probably you'll have success in a cheap way. Uh, applications of an Kaplan architecture, so uh, you always have a well-defined uh, event order as you have like in a, in a Lambda architecture most part of the time, so you can instruct any data set anytime, right? So, <laughs> Uh, uh, it's more used and it's more often used for social networks and platforms for detections. And it's very important because you need it to, uh, to answer the, the questions fast. So if you need to change and deploy your code fast to fix any bug or to implement a new feature, you can do it in few minutes or few hours. You don't need to run a bunch of tests. You need to, to, to create a huge amount of refactories if you start to create your code, uh, clean it enough, right? Another thing about streaming process that uh, they use less resources than Lambda architecture because you can implement uh, idea of horizontal uh, horizontality scale that you can just grow your machine instead put more machines and then you can apply better the ideas of how to scale in your machines. Another thing about the Kappa architecture is that uh, leverage machine learning to real time basis. Uh, Okay, Javier did a question here. Let's see. It's how to do stream. Okay, are you answer after, right? Hello? Hello? Okay. Um, but you have a cons because if you introduce a new bug into your code, probably you need to reprocess part of your code if it's uh, sever uh, if you have some uh, loss of data, right? And sometimes you need to stop uh, your pipeline. It means that if you are running a fraud detection, if you need to stop your pipeline for a few minutes to deploy or to fix something in the infrastructure, you have you needed to have like a big plan for that. So uh, otherwise you can bring problems to your business. So you have a pros and cons here. Now you talk about uh, quality of a pipeline or a data engineer product, a data product. So since it's like a computer programming, so the problems are almost the same. Uh, of course, you mentioned the, what I see the difference, right? If you see something wrong in a software development, probably you see the same uh, wrong thing in a, in a data product as well, right? The first things, uh, the first things that uh, it's very, very, very important on on data products is access access level for uh, the data. Uh, you are a software developer, probably you are you are deal with very sensitive data, uh, user data, uh, financial data, and uh, you as a, a, a data engineer. Uh, you must implement uh, access level to all data levels. It means that you need to implement access levels for your tables, for your data lakes, for your data sets, how your code interact with your level codes. For example, how your code can read the data from the data lake, how your code can read the data from different data sets. So this is more about the ethical 
and how you implement compliance in your company doing the GDPR in Europe or in another country, then uh, technical things, right? <clears throat> Uh, another thing about security is try to use a, uh, a common format for most part of your, your data. For example, try to use JSON files for uh, text files or PNG or CS, uh, SVG for image or parquet files or AVO files for uh, columnar format. So you have a different, uh, different kind of formats that you need to uh, understand better uh, how to use. There's a bunch of formats and there's a bunch of applications. Um, separation of concerns as well. Uh, who needs to access the data and why, right? and based in the code of course separations of concerns in your code but uh, avoid any kind of hard code uh, the duplication in your code and especially when you are writing down a sql into your code try to use all your columns all your statements because you broke your code easily when you needed to change and then you get easy to to fix right automation is the most important, I guess. I think that's a consensus. So uh, science data, data products are code. So version your codes, use the best way to use your, your version. Uh, power of tech, tech platforms. Uh, try to distribute the automation in different tech platforms. So you have your server for continuous deployment, for continuous uh, uh, integration. You have uh, your tools for code review, links. You can use different tools for monitoring logs that you talk ahead. So uh, automation is the key to keep the data product easy to, to, to fix, easy to improve, right? Monitoring. Don't waste your time in creating monitoring, using the monitoring. It's something that I learned in any company, even the small, even the big company that I'm working for. Uh, delegate your problem of monitoring things to cloud all the time, logging, uh, but try to avoid some kind of vendor login. So you have some right wrappers around the market that you can use different vendors uh, in the same code base with the same analysis. It's very important, but try to not waste your time uh, deploying a monitoring infrastructure. Even it's easy to deploy, it's quite hard to maintain and tends to be very, very, very expensive because even more, uh, as much as you started to collect in the data, more expensive your infrastructure become, right? And here, uh, the challenge. So test and trace your code. Regression tests is a must in the data engineer. It's a slightly difference. If you change your schema anytime, if you change your input, if you change your code, you need to make sure that your old data is still working, that you can read your old data from your data lake. Remember that the data uh, stored in data lake, for example, is immutable. They can change along the time. So for that, you need to have some regression tests to make sure that you can read the data from uh, data lake, for example, or from some stream because everything change. Uh, remember that I told about uh, inputs and inputs can change, can bring you problems. Try to, uh, to keep your inputs deterministic enough. So how you can uh, define your inputs, your schema to test and how uh, force your tests to broke to correct and then you can identify and trace all your code, right? And of course, as any, any other software, try to, oh, sorry, try to focus on uh, unit tests, especially for internal components. And I have just two tricks here that's very important for data products. It's 
try to containerize all your third-party components. Like, uh, let's imagine that you have a Kafka, you have a message quiz, you have like Spark, you have different softwares from different platforms that interact with your Python code, with your Python, uh, with your Python platform, and then you need it to uh, uh, to interact with your data. Instead of to uh, deploy it into your machine, you can use some kind of container and, and integrate with your uh, continuous integration service and continuous deployment service, right? And of course, when you reach this position, uh, it's easily to reach like an end to end uh, test. So uh, once a week or each new nice feature that you are developing or delivering for your pipeline, you can run a end to end test to make sure that all the things are, are running, right? That said, a lot of concepts. Let's talk about Python, our loved technology that brings us to this nice conference. Uh, uh, I will talk about six mainly areas of data products. The most common is what you call the UTL, extract, load, and transform. And this kind of tools, this kind of APIs, uh, is responsible to read the data, to process the data, and to send the data to another place, right? The most common and famous uh, and tool is called Apache Spark. Apache Spark was developed in uh, in Java, Scala, over JVM, but they have a native uh, wrapper for Python that you can write Python uh, and interact directly with JVM, right? There's a lot of mag magic behind the scenes, but don't worry about it to manage Spark clusters. You can just uh, use PySpark for that. It's my recommendation for anyone who are starting to, to deal with data, starting with uh, uh, data engineer stuff, right? Apache Spark is a must nowadays, right? Okay, I don't want to use a Java tool. I, I want to use something more Python way. So I offer to you Desk. Desk is a Python project that's writing in low level code, but they have like a, a Python wrapper and works basically like the same as Spark. They are a parallel computing library that you can integrate with your pandas and you can have like a bunch of machines in a cluster and you can distribute like your process in different, uh, different machines. Right, it's a very useful product. Uh, it's not well used, I guess, for for most part of the market, as far as I know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And, but it's a great choice if you want to uh, start to interact with pandas, Jupyter, and don't want to uh, spend so much time to learn uh, Java and Spark. You can go directly to Desk. Luich is an open source project that handles different tools, but they works uh, as a library in Python, is writing in Python, it's quite easy, that uh, handles complex pipelines. Basically, you have in a class that you define methods, and based on these methods, you put your logic to consume, process, and deliver your data. It's really useful. I love Luigi. Luigi was created in Spotify, and I still use Luigi until today, nowadays. MER Jobs is a quite old project. Uh, it's wrote in Python as well, right? But they run MapReduce jobs over Hadoop. Uh, it's more old school life, uh, smart old school style way to create distributed files, but it's still useful. I need to be honest, a long time I don't, uh, I, uh, I don't use MR job. And Ray, uh, I just read the documentation. I'm not able to recommend or not, but seems to be promising. Uh, when you need to deal with stream, streams, uh, we don't have like a Pythonic tool for streams, 
but you have Kafka. Kafka is basically the de facto tool in the market nowadays. Basically, everyone is using Kafka. For that, Python has like a library named Faust. Faust, you can just plug into one topic and start to consume it. As I told before, Python is a keystone here. You can do everything with Python, even integrate different platforms and technologies. So you can use different platforms, extract the best of each platform, and bring everything as, uh, to work properly with Python. It's awesome. Storm is another, uh, Storm is another platform uh, for stream that Python is accepted as well in a stream parse, is well used as well. Right for who uses Amazon or uh, who uses Amazon Storm to support in, uh, in Amazon Web Service. Okay, I will have like a brief uh, in analysis analysis when you need it to do. So pandas is de facto analysis tool for that. So you have different parts and. Um, uh, different uh, parts for pandas that are plugins that you can use in pandas to uh, provide a high performance analysis. So you have a data structures, data analysis tool, and integrated with NumPy, and then you can extract a lot from pandas. Uh, I won't talk about the, those three, uh, four uh, libraries. Uh, because my time is about to finish, right? But keep in mind that pandas, if you are going to analysis way, uh, pandas is de facto tool, and you can go and interact with Desk or Spark, okay? It's very important, panda works with Spark and Desk. You can use both if you want. Management. Airflow is another Python de facto tool for managing uh, scheduler uh, for your pipelines. Please, if you want to work with data, learn Airflow, right? Airflow is a Python-based tool that acts as a cron job, and you can create, as a Luigi, you can create very complex pipelines with Airflow, okay? For testing, testing is very important. So when you are testing your data code, you need to create fake databases, fake mass of tests, seed tests, so you have a bunch of those uh, libraries especially for Spark testing base, if you are using uh, Spark, because they have like a Python library for testing your Python code, or PyTest, that is an awesome Python that integrates with data things. And for finishing, the most important, uh, the most important, not so, it's very important that you validate your, your data all the time. Remember that I told about to validate, to have in, uh, inputs deterministics and something like that. Yes, uh, you have a bunch of tools that help you to validate the schema, how your data are coming from the, from the external data source. So you can define if the types of the columns, if the, the types, uh, if the information is correct enough, right? Uh, Cerberus and Evolup tools is really awesome tools, I really recommend, right? I use the schema for small tasks but I really recommend those three tasks, okay? And I would like to say a uh, very obrigado, thank you, thank you, and another language in European. And if you have any questions, you have two questions here in QA, I will try to answer. And if you have further questions, please drop me a message on email, Discord, Telegram, Twitter, whatever you want. I will be more than happy to, to interact with you. Thank you so much for the talk. I'm quite happy and was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Robson. Um, we indeed have questions. Um, one very interesting question is um, related to the Kappa architecture. Um, how to deal with streams that need a strict order so one event cannot be processed if the previous failed? Okay, great question. So uh, you can assume that in the Kappa architecture, all your events you, all will be 
tem na temporal, na, na timeline ou na historical uh, basis, right? Uh, what can happen if you lose some events is because your streaming software failed and you couldn't retry, but you can assume that uh, all your data you'll be in a, in a time series. If you need to process, as I told you, so the state of your data, you always change. So if you have one, one update, one deletion, one upgrade, whatever, uh, you can follow it by your time series. And then you can reprocess, and then you can uh, create, uh, extract your data sets from, from there, okay? But if your code are not able to process the event, you, you must make sure that at least you have some retention policy in your stream software. Like Kafka, you can retain your software, uh, you can retain your messages, or if you are using another software in Azure or Amazon, okay? Thanks. So we have all the questions. Oh, they're popping up very quickly now. <laughs> um, next question is, what's a good way to link data and the version of the code that processed it? For example, version column per every row doesn't seem like the most elegant solution. Uh, it's a quite a complex question. I needed to understand better what the uh, answer wants, but I will try to be generic to, to try to give you some, some insight. Uh, does it make so much sense to relate the version of the code with the version of the data? Because what matter is you have your version, your schema, not your, uh, let's separate, version your code as a tool, it's okay, but version your schema as a technique, as a good practice is even better than uh, relate your code with your version of your data. For example, in general, when you use some JSON or if you use some uh, tool for uh, uh, create schemas for your machine, in for your data, in general, you specify the version of that schema. And based on that version, you can have your regression tests, you can manipulate. For me, this is the, the most elegant solution because you can focus on your schema and then go to your code to fix it. So we have another question, thanks. Um, any recommendation for end-to-end -end tests in the stream world? Uh, a simple Python script can handle it. So for my case, most part of the, the, the case, I create like a, a small Python script or uh, I create some Ansible script that uh, uh, spin a uh, Docker container with all the, the third part compon components that I need. And then I run end to end. And this Python script that I mentioned, check the input, the process, and the output to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Because there are three kinds of tests. So you have the regression tests, my unit tests, but the end-to-end, -end, uh, I need to make sure that the previous tests are running fine. You can use this technique for any kind of end-to-end -end tests. For example, if you need to run like a uh, a streaming process with Kafka and Spark, you can have two different Docker containers running Spark and running Kafka, and then you can deploy your Python codes, and then you can create a small script that validates the results for you. Thanks, so we have one more question. Uh, when is a good idea to replace, let's just see, a SQL-based pipeline with Python code? Benefit would be just readability or one my count on a speed up. I think that the, the 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 answer is when you are not able to create more easy queries and you started to create a lot of procedures, functions, or anything that helps you to automate your pipeline, probably is is a signal that you need to improve your architecture because. Uh, functions, procedures into the database is quite hard to test, it's quite hard to maintain, it's quite hard to version it. So probably you bring more complexity to your architecture that uh, uh, I afford to migrate to code and you have like a, a good data pipeline it can uh, work than, uh, better than uh, a simple SQL based pipeline. 
Okay, thanks. Just, just, very just much. one thing for Philip. Yeah. So I still use a lot of uh, SQL based pipeline because solve most part of the problem. This is not a problem, but when when you get your product getting more users or getting more complex, you need to change the strategy. But if your strategy is still working, this is very good. So, so thanks again, Robson. Thank you so much.